In the previous video, we introduced this new idea of representing binary numbers as column vectors. We also talked about bracket notation as a way to express these vectors and presented a new type of operation known as the Kronecker product, which allows us to construct out of individual bits larger vectors that represent multi-bit numbers. Now in this video, we will show how we can represent reversible circuits as matrices that we can then use to transform these vectors that represent our bits. So let's start by doing a quick review of what we covered in the previous video. So we said that the general definition for a single bit represented in its column vector form is given by a vector with components beta zero and beta one, where these two entries can only take values of zero and one, but where we also have to meet the restriction that the length of the vector, which is given by the square root of the sum of its components squared, must be equal to one. Now we said that for multiple bits, we will find the vector representation by taking the Kronecker product of the vectors that represent the single bits of that number. And we gave this expression, which for an n bit number is equivalent to doing the tensor product of the individual components. So when we represent this in column vector notation, what we end up with is a vector with components beta zero, beta one, all the way down to beta capital N minus one, where this capital N is two to the N, where this N is the number of bits. And this vector is subject to the same restrictions we have for the single bit, where each of these beta sub i's can only take values of zero and one, and where the length of that vector which is given by the square root of its components squared must be equal to one. So let's give an example. So let's say we have the binary number one, one, zero. So it's a vector representation, which we say we would just put the same number inside a cat to represent that this is the tensor product of the individual vectors that represent our bits. And then we can find what that column vector is by just taking the Kronecker product of the individual column vectors. So the way we would do it is first we perform the Kronecker product between these first two vectors, which gives us zero times the vector to the right, which is one zero, and then one times, again, the same vector, one zero. And then this will be equal to zero one, tensored with a vector of length four equal to zero zero one zero. And then doing the Kronecker product between these two vectors again, now we have zero times this long vector we have here. So zero, zero, one, zero, and one times zero, zero, one, zero, which then gives us a vector of length eight equal to zero, 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 one, zero. Now, something interesting that we did not mention in the previous video, but you can find on the course website is that the decimal representation of this number is six. And if we take a look at the final column vector, what we end up with is a vector just with zeros, except for a one in the sixth entry of this vector. So uh, the way we will count this is we always start by taking the first element in the vector as the zeroth entry. So the next question is, okay, so how do we manipulate these bits represented as vectors when we pass them through circuits? So let's say that, you know, we start with the, the bit zero represented by our ket zero uh, vector, and we want to pass that through an X gate. So we know that the X gate flips our bit. So we need to find a matrix representation that whenever we start with a vector one zero, we're gonna end up with vector zero one. And you know, if we were to apply that X gate again, well, the negation of one is zero. So then we need to go back to vector one zero. Well, the matrix that allows us to do this transformation, which we call the X gate is given by zero one, 
one zero. And we can easily see that this works if we simply take an X gate and we apply it to state zero. When we do the matrix multiplication, which I'll remind you, the way we do this is we multiply the first entry of this matrix with the first entry of the vector. So that's zero times one. And then in the matrix, we move to the next entry in the first row and multiply it with the second entry of the column vector and add it to this result. So we do plus one times zero. And then we're done with the first row of this result. And we move then down to the second row of our matrix. So we do one times the, again, the first entry of this vector. So we do one times one plus the second entry of the second row of our matrix times the second entry of this vector. So it's zero times zero, which gives us the vector zero one, which is our state one. And we can show the same for applying the X gate to state vector one. This is going to result in one zero, which is state zero. And that's it really for single bit transformations. So let's move on to two bit transformations. So let's start with, you know, the, the first example we, we introduced uh, when we started talking about two bit gates, which was the C naught gate, which if you recall is equivalent to an XOR. And there what we had was a circuit where we apply an X gate to a second bit condition on the value of the first bit. So let's call this first bit bit one and this bottom bit bit zero. And let's let's do a, a little table again to to show what the output of this looks like. So let's say we have here B1, B0 at the input. And then here what we have is B1, B0 at the output. So we start with zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. And if you recall, this is how the output bits will look like for this reversible XOR gate or CX gate. And if you don't remember, you can go back to the previous video and see how we arrive at, at these values. So to construct the matrix that performs this transformations, the first thing we need to do is recall that because these vectors correspond to two bit numbers, they're going to be column vectors with four elements. So if we need to go from a vector with four entries to another vector with four entries, well, what we need is a four by four matrix to transform them. So this will be a four by four matrix. So to find what that matrix is, since we have all of our input to output relationships, what we can do is populate this matrix with some arbitrary entries. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And then we do that all the way down to C3, 3. And then start by replacing our input vector and our output vector and try to solve for this C coefficient. So for example, we can start with our vector corresponding to 0, 0. So we know that that's the vector one, zero, zero, zero. And we know that the output when applying that matrix has to be also one, zero, zero, zero. So if we multiply this matrix with this vector, we have the advantage that these three entries are zero. So what's going to happen is that the first element at the output vector is going to be C zero, zero times one. So we get C zero, zero plus C zero one times zero, which is zero. And then C zero two times zero, which is zero. And then C zero three times zero, which is zero. So as you can see, all these entries are equal to zero. And then we can move now to the second row and do the exact same thing. Then we have C one zero times again, one gives us C one zero. And then the rest are gonna be zeros again. So at the end, what we're going to have is that this matrix multiplication is going to give us basically just the first column of the matrix. And since we want this to match to the output one, zero, 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 
we know that then this coefficient has to be one, this coefficient has to be zero, this, C, this zero and this zero. And then what do we do next? Well, we go to the second relationship we had up here, which was that for an input of zero one, we want an output of zero one. So we can you know, replace all these values here with the corresponding vectors, which for zero one corresponds to the column vector zero one zero zero. And then repeat this process. And what we're going to find is that in this particular case, this output vector is going to be equal to the second column of this matrix, which means that this coefficient C11 now is going to be one and all of the other ones are going to be zero. And then we move on to, to find the rest of the components of this matrix. So what we end up with is that for the CX gate, the corresponding matrix is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 0. And then we can use this exact same process to find what the matrices are for other gates like the CCX gate. Now, because the CCX gate, which we use to construct our reversible AND operation, operates on three bits, this is going to be a two to the three or an eight by eight matrix. So we're not gonna do this by hand. Instead, let's do it in Python. So uh, again, we're gonna import NumPy and SymPy. And let's first go ahead and construct our CCX matrix, which I have already done here. So if we display this matrix, makes it a little bit easier to see. So let, let's do an example and see if we can use this uh, uh, to do uh, the AND operation. So let's first start by constructing, for example, the ket representation of 0, 0, 0. So we showed how to do this in the previous video. First, we create a column vector for our ket 0. So we just create a NumPy array and one for ket 1. And then we can construct, let's say, ket 0, 0, 0 by performing the Kronecker product between three of these ket0 elements. So we do Kronecker product between ket0 and ket0, and then we have to do this again for another ket0. And then if we display the vector for that, we see we get a column vector with eight entries where the first one is one. So if we were to multiply this vector with our CCX, matrix, well, what we would expect is because this is zero, 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 and we can, we can think of this first two elements as our inputs and this one as our output. Well, the end between zero and zero is zero. So we, we should get the exact same vector at the output. So if we do CCX and multiply that with our cat zero, 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 we got the exact same result. Let's display that using SymPy, and here we have it. Now, this is a little trivial, so let's actually perform the AND operation where the first two entries are ones, and how do we construct that vector? So let's call it ket110. Well, we perform the Kronecker product between ket1, ket1, and ket0. So re recall that this, this binary number in decimal is number six, so we get a one on the sixth entry, and if we now perform the matrix multiplication between our CCX matrix and our ket110, now we get a vector with the last entry at one, which in ket notation will correspond to ket111. Now the next question is, okay, well, what if now we have a circuit where we have multiple bits but we're not dealing with these matrices for gates that we already know what the input to upper relationship is, but rather have individual, let's say, not gates on each of the bits. So for example, let's say we have bit two, bit one, bit zero, and let's say that we have a circuit where we don't apply anything to bit zero, we apply an X gate to bit one, and then again, we don't apply anything to bit zero. How do we construct the matrix that represents this circuit. So the way this is done is very similar to how we compose 
multi-bit vectors. So the matrix that represents this circuit, let's call it Q, is found by taking the Kronecker product of the matrices associated with each of these bits. So for the first bit, we're not applying anything. So what do we put there? Well, we use what is known as the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is a matrix that when we multiply a vector by, the, by it, we get the same vector out. And then we do the Kronecker product with the X matrix, and then another Kronecker product with the identity matrix. Now the identity matrix is basically a matrix with diagonal elements of one, one and of diagonal elements of zero. And then we know the X gate is zero, one, one, zero. And then again, identity is one, zero, zero, one. And we can show very easily why the identity leaves a vector unchanged. If we apply identity to, let's say, ket zero, we're doing one, zero, zero, one times one, zero. If we do the matrix multiplication, we get one, zero which is the same ket zero we had. And when we can show the same for ket one. So let's go ahead and, and implement this in Python and see what the equivalent matrix will be for this three bit circuit. So let's first create our identity matrix using a numpy array where we pass one zero and then zero one. And then our X matrix, which is going to be zero one and one zero. Okay. And now, we want to construct the matrix Q, which was the Kronecker product between identity and X, and then the Kronecker product of that with another identity. And then if we display that matrix, this is what we get. And we can verify that this works by, for example, let's create the ket 010 by doing the Kronecker product of ket 0 with ket 1, and then that Kronecker product with at zero. And if we multiply Q by this new vector, well, what should we expect? Well, this is the matrix representation of a circuit that applies an X gate only to the middle bit, but leaves the other two bits alone. It, it applies identity to those two bits. So the expectation is that we should get the vector associated with the binary number zero, 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 right? If we flip this middle bit, we will just get zero, zero, zero. So let's see if that's what we get. Here we go. We get the column vector with a one in the zeroth entry, which is the, the vector corresponding to the binary number zero, zero, zero. And the nice thing about this is that then we can use these concepts to build any circuit we want. So let's take, for example, the circuit we showed for our reversible OR gate, where we had two input bits, let's call them B1, and B0. And we said that if we want our reversible or we would apply X gates to this top two bits, initialize this bottom bit to state one, and then apply a CCX gate to that third bit condition on the first two bits. Now for this circuit, we showed that this output gives us A or B. But if we, if we look at this, the two top bits also get flipped when performing this operation. So one thing we can do to just recover the original values we had there is just apply X gates here as well. So that way we negate the bits, apply our condition CCX gate to get the A or B output here, which should actually be the OR between B1 and B0. Um, and then negate those two again to recover the original values we had. Um, the way we would construct the matrix for this circuit is we will first get a matrix for this portion, which as we showed above, we do it by taking the Kronecker product of the individual gates we're applying there. So let's call this Q1. Then we would apply our CCX gate. Let's call this Q2. And then we will apply, let's call this Q3, even though it's, it's identical to this Q1. But um, I want to do this just to show that the vector at the output will be given by taking our input vector, which is B, first multiplying it by Q1. So notice how here in the circuit, we go from left to right. But when we're do the, doing matrix multiplication, 
we're actually going from right to left. So we put our, our vector on the right, then the first thing that happens is it gets multiplied by Q1, then gets multiplied by Q2, and then gets multiplied by Q3. And the reason this is important is because matrix multiplication is not commutative. So it's not the same to perform this operation and to perform Q1 times Q2 times Q3. So the order in which we apply this operation matters. So let's go ahead and, and implement this in, in Python and see if we can get the expected behavior from an OR gate. So let's first define that matrix that we call Q1, which is going to be the Kronecker product of an X gate with an X gate for the first two bits, and then that Kronecker product with an identity gate. Then our Q2 matrix is going to be our CCX gate, which if you recall, we already defined above. And then our Q3 matrix is going to be equal to Q1. So the total matrix for our circuit, let's call it Q, is going to be, as we said, Q3 times Q2 times Q1. So remember, Q1 operates on the state first, so it's gonna be the one we put most to the right. And then let's go ahead and display that matrix, and uh, here we have it. So now let's check if this does indeed act as an OR. So we're going to define an input state where the first two bits are our inputs and the third bit we're going to initialize uh, at one. So let's say our inputs are zero, one, and then our third bit is going to be initialized at one. So we do the Kronecker product of ket zero with ket one, and then that with Kronecker product with ket one. And then let's display that. So as expected, we get a one on the third entry of that vector. And then if we multiply our matrix Q with that ket 0, 1, 1, we should expect to get the same output, right? Because the OR between 0 and 1 is 1. So let's display that. And here we can see that we indeed get the same output. Now, what would make that third bit flip to 0? Well, the OR between 0 and 0 is 0. So if we now create the state 0, 0, 1, so let's change this to 0 which is, you know, a vector with a one in the first entry. Then if we multiply this with the Q matrix, the expectation is that the OR between zero and zero should be zero. So this should give us the column vector corresponding to state zero, zero, zero. So let's do that. And here we have it. So we get a vector where we get a one in the zeroth entry, which will be state zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.